Hey guys, in this video I want to get into why it doesn't matter how much the how much price moves up or down. Um, you can make the same amount of money whether it's a 10 point, 20 point, 30 point range or it's a 114 point range guys, it doesn't matter. Um, obviously you will need to have the ability to put on more contracts in a lower volatility environment. That kind of goes without saying. Uh, but if you have the ability to put on, if you have enough capital, if you're trading a uh, funded account, uh, whatever, if you have the ability to put on more contracts, um, then it doesn't matter. You can make just as much money in the London session as you can in the New York session. They're not inherently different, guys. Order flow, market structure, um, ICT concepts, inefficiencies and liquidity, they're all the same, whether it's a 30-point range or it's a 113-point range. Uh, it's just you'd have to put on more contracts to make the same amount of money. So what I've done to show you, you know, an example of how this would look and how this would work is I've taken Tuesday's London session, which is from 0200 to 0530, and just talk to you about, so look, the maximum range here was 28 and a half points, right? So one-fourth, basically, of what the New York session did. Can you make just as much money? Yes. Okay. Obviously, you would need to put on more contracts. But guys, the, the analysis remains the same. So start the London session. We trade lower. Notice price is supported off of this bullish order block. And you can see that the closes are starting to come in. So we're probably going to go target buy side. We get long here. We get out here or we get out here. Right. Now, that's only a five point or a nine point trade but if you have 10 contracts on does it matter no you'll just have to learn to scale up the contracts with uh, lower volatility and scale down the contracts with greater volatility so the order flow noticing where the candle bodies are closing and notice noticing where you know there was also buy side imbalance sell side inefficiency over here that price the closes were respecting see notice that the closes were respecting so that was a signal for you to get long we target the nearest buy side liquidity, either the first high or the second high, and you get filled. Similarly, as we go short, notice that the closes are respecting that volume imbalance over here. Okay, It's also respecting that green candle right there. So as price trades down here, we get short on a sell stop or we get short at the market. Stop goes up here. Where are we targeting? Well, targeting the nearest low would be a little bit aggressive. right? Let's target the first black candle. That's 2350, 1950, four points. Or you could target the volume imbalance. Okay, four points, you get filled in a few minutes. Okay, so we're short there. You would need to put on a good number of contracts, right? Like 10 contracts in order to make that worthwhile. But the, the market structure and noticing where the candles are closing, noticing where the nearest inefficiency or opposite colored candle or the nearest liquidity is, guys, it's all the same. It doesn't matter how many points it is. Similarly, we come down, we see that small bissy right there. What does that, what does that candle close look like to you, right? It's respecting that bissy there. Get short, stop goes there. Where, where are we targeting? Well, we could target that volume imbalance right there, that little micro gap at 1822, and that's another four points, or we could target the nearest buy side liquidity here or here. The top one wouldn't get you filled immediately, so I'd recommend there in that instance. That's 1818 you get filled at 1824 at six points. Okay. Now, these candles are going to make their, because it's the overnight session, the mark to markets are going to be slower. So you'll be able to see these things happen uh, with a lot more time for you to recognize what is happening if you're following and you're reading the candle bodies. Okay. We move on. We're in the London session. Let's say that we don't get short here and we're just waiting. Where does that one minute candle close? And that one minute candle close? Does that look like that's respecting an inefficiency to you? Yup. So where are we targeting? Nearest buy side, nearest buy side, or that green candle over here that hits all those targets. 1819, 1825, that's another six points right there. So as you can see, we're working 1825 to 1815, we're, wor we're just working a 10 point range. And that's, and yeah, you can make a living off a 10 point range, absolutely. Uh, if you were down on a 30 second, 15 second chart, you would you would see similar things. So as the as the price comes back down, where where do, what do these closes look like to you? Right, where are they closing? 
Does that look like a wick inefficiency that we're closing on? Yep, we get long. What are we targeting? Nearest inefficiency right there, we get filled. 1818, 1824, it's six points. Um, let's say that we ignore this price action or you could try shorting it. What do these two minute candles, those closes look like to you? Does it look like it's respecting that black candle right there? Well, it sure does, right? That would be an order block that it's respecting. So we get long again. Where are we targeting? Nearest buy side. Uh, what is that? 1821, 1831. That's 10 points. Okay, so now we're racking up a lot of points. Now we're coming in. That's in the London Cash Open, by the way. So we're waiting for price, you know, to do its thing. What do these two candle closes look like to you? Does that look like it's respecting that Bissy? Yeah, it sure does, right? So we get long again. Where are we targeting? Nearest buy side. We're long at 1832. We're covered at 1841. That's nine points. So, guys, you don't need to trade in a high volatility environment. That's not that's that's not how day trading works, guys. It, it's just mathematics. And if you can put on more contracts, you can make the same exact amount of money. Um, even three or four contracts, guys, and it's and it's enough. The overnight session by itself is enough. Um, price is working. Price worked this uh, during the London session. We worked a 28 and a half point range, and you could have just been playing these swings from swing to swing, and just playing that that same that same 26 points, guys. And guess what? It comes all the way back. And so ultimately, price went nowhere, right? But you're racking up points. You're like a trading algorithm. You're just playing these swings, guys. And that's how you got to view trading, guys. This is not investing. Um, we are not holding things for a long period of time. We are day trading. Um, ultimately, price went nowhere, right? That's why you have to be in and out of the market because you're trading intraday volatility. So, you know, you don't need uh, a lot. You don't need a 112 point range to make money. I don't care if the NASDAQ's up 50 points, if it's up 100 points, if it's up 20 points, guys. I can play the same exact 20 point range all day long and make all the money that I need. It's theoretically possible. Um, in fact, I would say, guys, I generally like trading ranges more. Um, I feel more comfortable playing both sides of the market. I don't like playing the same side over and over again, even if that's what order flow is saying that you need to do. So you got to get out of the investor's mindset if you're day trading, guys. This is not investing. We are not holding positions for more than sometimes three minutes. I mean, it's a complete different mindset. We are not investing in any way, shape, or form. If you hold on to these positions too long, it's just going to run all the way back down against you guys. You, you can't. You have to be in and out of the market. Um, and maybe that, you know, if you were to show that to the average person that has no exposure to, to trading, uh, most people will be frightened by how much you're doing. Like, oh, you're over trading, you're over trading. No, it's a 28 point range and I'm trying to uh, maximize the returns I can get from the same 28 points over and over again. Okay, uh, and if you get really good at it, you can be a high frequency trader. So, yeah, could you have made just as much money in the same 28 points on the London session as you could in the 111 points or so that it was in the New York session? Absolutely. Okay, um, you wouldn't need to put on more contracts, but. It's just a mind shift, guys. It's a mind shift. That's why, as a day trader, you cannot get wedded to your positions. You can't hold on to things for too terribly long. Um, you're in and out of the market, guys. You're in and out of the market. You are trading. You are trading, right? You are buying and selling. And sometimes, if you want to be like me and you want to be a scalper, you're buying and selling frequently. You're high frequency trading. Why? Because we're trying to we're trying to to catch alpha or profit from changes in short-term delta, meaning intraday volatility. And that's that's really the objective. So I would personally, I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you, in many ways, I prefer this over just straight up. Uh, and, and for many people, I'd be like, what do you mean? Well, I, I, I don't know. I like the market going back and forth. I think it's the natural state of things. Um, I don't particularly like it when the market is going in one direction now. Obviously, right, the analysis during the New York session could just be buy, 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 buy. We're going to buy some more. Um, not, it's not particularly fun to me, but, but yeah, you could definitely just roll with that today. And sometimes the market's going to be like that. It's going to be unidirectional. It's going to be one directional. And there's really, you know, you could make 
money in only one direction. So, anyways, guys, this is this has been my video on. No, it doesn't matter how much the Nasdaq moves. I don't care if it's a twenty-eight point range or if it's a hundred point range. It makes absolutely no difference to me. Um, market structure, order flow, ICT concepts—they are all exactly the same. Except the macros, he doesn't teach any London session macros yet. I hope that he does, but he doesn't teach any London session macros. So, anyways, guys, um, this has been my video on why it doesn't matter how much the NASDAQ moves.